everybody. Welcome back to another hot episode of a very special podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear. Oh, yeah. And then discuss them over some sparkling water. I'm your boy, Patrick M. Dunn, and I'm joined here, as always, by uh, Kat Halstead, the student. You're a student now? Uh, starting in January, I will be. January. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess I'm also a student. I'm a life lifelong student. Yeah, you've been a student for like forever. You're always a student. You know what? I love being a student. I don't know. Just something something about academia. That's fun. Can't wait for you to go back. Some pencils, notebooks. Listen, I've got 30 credits left to do. There you go. You'll get through it in no time. So. No time. 30 credits. Get my English BA. Yeah, get your BA. And then I can work on getting the psychology masters. Yes. We're both going to be masters. You know what? You'd think I would be a master of something by now, but no. But you're not. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> uh, almost. Thinking about it, actually. <laughs> almost done with this thing, so I might, might do that. You never know. One never knows. But, like, can you become a master's in nursing? You can. That would either make you, like, okay. a manager, or, or you can be a teacher. You can actually teach. I can stand in front of a classroom of, like, 22-year-olds mm-hmm. and tell them about the GI system if I really wanted to. Do I? No. Oh. Wow. Anyway, uh, it's this is kind of like a combo up because this is our Here Comes the Booze, our only Here Comes the Booze that we'll probably do, and Daylight Savings Time, <laughs> which is soon, I think, like a, like a week. Yeah, hold on. I'm looking up the exact date. Uh, daylight Savings Time Oh, um, ends on November 3rd. It ends, so it's over. But On November 3rd. But we go back an hour, right? Yes, we fall back. And in the spring, we spring forward. Thanks for that education. (laughs) I hope you bring that knowledge to your schoolwork. (laughs) So we're dipping into a show which I thought we've already done before, but you said you searched the archives? I could not find it in our archives, but... I don't know. I mean, I can do a quick little search again. I mean, I have vivid memories of talking about this show with you for some reason, unless it was just like a group thing. That doesn't mean anything, though, buddy. That is true. That is true. But but I feel like we had like an in-person discussion. It was recorded and put it on the internet. Unless like it came up in conversation in an episode. It probably came up in conversation. Uh, So what are we doing? What classic TV series? We are doing the classic TV series Erie, Indiana. Yes. Is it a classic? I think it's a classic. It is. It's it's definitely a classic. It might be a one season wonder, but it has a major following. Yeah, I, I you know what? I hold this show on the same pedestal as my so called life where it's one season only, but it lived on for years mm-hmm. in perpetual reruns. Yeah. And I did not know this, but I just found out today that Erie, Indiana had a spinoff series in like the late 90s. Yeah, so like it ran through a couple of different um, syndication packages. Yeah, it was like Fox Kids or something, like in the afternoon, I think, or Saturday mornings, maybe. Yeah, it got like some Disney Channel, some Fox Kids, and Fox Kids was like, hey, this show's actually doing really well on our, like, programming block, even though it's from, like, 1991. Let's do a series a few years later with a couple of other kids in Erie and Indiana and see what happens. And that one also only lasted a season. Yeah, I was uh, looking at this a little bit. So it's called Erie, Indiana, The Other Dimension. Mm-hmm. And it takes place in Erie, Indiana, but it's, like, a um, another dimension. <laughs> it doesn't take place in... The original dimension. But I guess yeah. the kids from the first one crossed over for the first episode. They like appear on a TV set and talk to the kids in the new one to kind of like pass the torch, so to say. Yeah. Uh, which I thought, you know what? I looked up this clip on, uh, you can actually find it on TikTok if you search Eerie Indiana or the other dimension. Apparently there's like an Eerie Talk fandom out there too. I, I, you know what? I had a couple things pop up. On my TikTok yesterday, after I watched this episode on Peacock. Oh, it's on Peacock? I watched it on um, Tubi. It was on Tubi for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched it on Peacock. I didn't realize it was on Peacock. I would have gone there because I had to watch uh, it with commercials, which made this show feel a few minutes longer than it was. Because uh, I will say this episode felt like it was 10 minutes. Yeah, it it's a very 
quick episode. It's a very quick show because I know I did a binge watch of the entire series a couple years ago. It's a really fast watch. Uh, yeah, there's only 19 episodes in the original run. And I don't even think all of them actually aired on NBC who housed the show. I think they have leftover episodes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... There was one episode. There's one episode that didn't air on NBC, and it was the final episode. Okay, uh, so that was... the one. Is that the one where... Um, they break the fourth wall. Yeah. That's Jason Marston or James Marston. One of the Marstons. Jason. Jason. It's Jason. He plays okay. Dash. Okay, hold on. We got to talk about this. Okay. Jason Marston, who did the voice of Binks, Tha- Thackeray Binks, the cat, in Hocus Pocus, did later appear on several episodes of Indiana as Dash X, which also co-stars Omri who played Max in Hocus Pocus. And who's Marshall in Erie, Indiana. He's the main kid. Yes. Uh, has, has Armory Katz done anything else? He, <laughs> oh, he's not on Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. He was like the kid on Dallas. He's a Ewing. Yeah, he was a Ewing on Dallas. He doesn't really act much anymore. I've seen pictures of him today. He, I think he just kind of got out of the business, me thinks. He's got 14 acting credits. Like, they're very, there's like one from 2018 where he's playing a character named Marshall Teller in something called Childhood Thoughts, which I'm looking up right now. That sounds like a um, Jody Sweeten series. <laughs> it's a family friendly series from Tim Nervith, the dude behind Horror Talk Movie Review, where the narrator will talk about anything in children's media, either spine tingling and spooky. I've never heard of this. Oh. Is it a streaming show or is it a uh, network cable? Uh, it's got to be. It looked like it had a Netflix credit in it. So Okay. Uh, I was going to say Crackle, maybe. <laughs> Crackle loves to do things yeah. like that. Well, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't even watch Netflix that often anymore. Uh, me neither. You know what? Not a fan. Like, there's not much on there anymore. There, There's really not. No. And now, like, the basic plan has ads. Uh, so I was on the, like, the one after that, and apparently, like, it's, like, 20 bucks now. Yeah, no, I... I got a charge on my card the other day, and it said, like, $22 Netflix, and I'm like, the, the fuck, man? I was like, I think I've watched it three times in the last year, maybe. Like, do you know what I've watched on Netflix in the last year? Uh... Can you guess? Can you guess what I have watched on Netflix in the last year? Love is Blind. No. Um... The, sh- the reality show about um, the special needs kids falling in love. Maybe that one? Nope. Uh, I was going to say Stranger Things, but I highly doubt it. I wish you guys could see the eye roll I just had. <laughs> <laughs> I am so anti-Stranger Things. It was vicious. Okay, the fact that I'm like really disappointed that you did not guess, at the very least, Bridgerton. Bridgerton is like my thing, my work best, Kira, who I miss. She and I were both like obsessed. Obsessed with it. I have Bridgerton tea. Uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Question for you before you go on to your next show. Um, so did you watch Downton Abbey? No. Okay. Because they're. I feel like they're cut from the same cloth. I see the thinking. Um, PBS just... I just never caught it to get into it. And then when I tried, I was just like, eh, I'm just not in the mood for this right now. Uh, it, I mean, it, it is pretty heavy show. Um, I mean, I think PBS used to air them as like three hour episodes. So you had to like sit down for a long time. Yeah. But they were they weren't originally shot that way. I think they were actually hour longs, but PBS just presented that way. But um, yeah, I, I think it's the same creator is well got his hands in Bridgerton and Downton Abbey. If I remember correctly. Uh, okay, so Bridgerton is brought to you by Chandra Rhimes. Oh, what's the one I'm thinking of then? I don't know. But um, it's also based on a romance novel book series by Julia Quinn. I would read that series. So each season there is a romance novel that it's based on. The last season they kind of they went out of order and they screwed some stuff up for later on. But that's a whole other conversation. All right, what's the other show? Uh, That 90s show. Okay. Which Netflix just canceled. Okay, I haven't even watched the second season yet, so is it worth it? Is it worth it? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I love Deborah Jo Rupp and Kurt, and they're just 
so funny. And I think a lot of the younger cast kind of really got their feel. They got that groove. Where the char- There's a few things where I'm just like, that That wasn't that year in the 90s. Well, I mean, that 70s show was kind of a um, potpourri. It was a potpourri of years. Like, it never really specified when or where in the 70s it was. I think yeah. and the 90s show is the same way. The, my only complaint with the 90s show, and I don't remember, I mean, I wasn't alive in the 70s, but I feel like they didn't, like, snatch the vibes right, though, for the teens. The teens seem to now to me. Like, I feel like they got um, Layla, Leia kind of right. Yeah. If you think about it, she's like that nerdy girl. Yeah. Who's kind of, she's got a father who is, like, his whole like work life is actually about Star Wars. And then let's be real, Donna was kind of a nerd too. Yeah, Donna was kind of a um a little on the uh, bookish side, so to say. So you get that and we get Leia and she makes she makes the most like she feels the most actual 90s for me. I feel like the best gal pal feels a little too 2000s for me. Uh, and not even like 2000s, like our 2000s, but like 2000s now, like 2022 or something. I feel like they're trying to make her into the same kind of feminist cat from 10 Things I Hate About You was. Okay, yeah, I see that. It just doesn't click right. Yeah, there was too much, um, like, there wasn't a character that I could relate to. So to say. I mean, like, I remember watching that 70s show with my parents when it first came out, and they were just like, oh, yeah, this is what it was like. This is what it was like. And like, oh, yeah, like, that's like my buddy in high school. It was like Kelso or something. And like, they they grasped onto that. And I watched that 90s show, and it was just like, oh, like, you know what? Um, the neighbor has a whole poster hanging on the wall. <laughs> like, okay, it's the 90s because of that. And that's it. Like, that's our only, like, connection. And, like, maybe they'll make, like, a reference to, like, Alanis Morissette or something here and there. Yeah. I might be thinking of that other show. What was that other 90s show that I thought did a little bit better? Everything Sucks? Was that it? That one had a few of the same, like, inauthentic aspects, though, too. It was a little too on the nose. I don't know. I guess it's, like, you want to make this show appeal to us and Mm -hmm. them. So it's, like, you got to find a common middle ground, I guess, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, anyway, speaking of, not speaking of anything, uh, <laughs> let's just kind of reel it back into uh, <laughs> Area Indiana. Do you want to do a cast breakdown first, or do you want to kind of go into that hot night of television? I want to do hot night of television, and then we can break down the cast. Okay. Uh, this is kind of exciting. I don't know. Really excited to talk about this night. So we selected um, the episode called The Lost Hour. Uh, just quick breakdown. This involves daylight saving time. Ending, apparently. We learned it ended. And I, I, I feel like this episode aired way too late to coincide with that because this episode aired on December 1st, 1991. Yeah. So, okay, hold on. Because we are in the digital age. I feel like I want to know when did... Daylight Savings Time, and in 1991. All right, look it up. While you're doing that, um, I'm going to add my two cents, because I always felt like it was October. It was October 27th, 1991. Okay, so they were way off. (laughs) Honestly, they were probably writing the episode while Daylight Savings Time was coming to an end. No. Filming it. Maybe filming it. Um, Or, like, you know... I feel like they already would have had it in the can. Maybe they, like, intended it to air around that time, but maybe the show started later than they thought they... I don't know. Who ca- it's TV. No one cares. It's 1991. No they aired stuff out of order all the time, so that is very much a possibility. Yeah, I mean, this episode could have aired in, like, October, but maybe they thought it was, like, not such a strong episode, so they wanted to do it later. You never know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it, it wasn't a sweeps episode, that's for sure. No, and I mean, this show doesn't really have too much continuity other than it just being a weird town, so it's like, you can just air the episodes whenever you want. Like, you can make this the first episode. Yep. Like, it would make sense, it tracks, because the show literally puts, like, the premise in its theme song. In the opening credits, yeah. Which is great, I love when shows do that, because then I don't have to, like, think about it. Uh, Alright, so this is a Sunday night show. I remember that, I remember that very vividly. I rem- You know what? I have a memory of being in fourth grade, like sitting in my fourth grade class and talking about this show like at lunch. I don't know if you have the same memories. I just remember the um, 
the Tupperware episode. I think it's the first one, actually, too. Yeah, the Tupperware episode is the first episode, and that's the one I generally remember the most. Uh, I, I always thought that was a goosebump. Like, looking back in time, I was like, oh, that might have been a goosebump. Nope, it's but not a goosebump. No. It's an eerie Indiana. Yeah, I I very vividly remember the episode that we did tonight. I don't like I have vivid memories of the milkman in this episode <laughs> and the milk truck, the airy dairy milk truck and like the creepy like time guys in the glasses and suits. Like I just anytime I see like, like a businessman in a suit and glasses, I just think of this show. <laughs> That's You don't think of Don Draper? I mean, I think of him now, but <laughs> Pre Don Draper, I always thought of Erie, Indiana. <laughs> okay, okay, that's fair enough. All right, so I'm looking through this net of television real quick. Uh, this is kind of a um, this is a weird night. This is just a weird a weird night. I can't okay. wait to get into it. So we're gonna kind of you want to start with our boys at the Alphabet ABC like we always do. Yeah, let's let's start with the ABC. All right, this is a pretty um, standard night for the most part for abc um things kick off at 7 p.m we get a 7 p.m slot because that was a thing on sunday nights uh life goes on a show we've talked about numerous times that have never done and i don't know if we either of us have ever actually watched it no i used to watch the show all the time oh you did okay pretty consistently um but you've never seen it never like i never actually watched it really yeah how do you know so much about it then because we've talked about the show like a hundred times at least I don't know. I mean, it was in the zeitgeist, pretty much. Yeah, I think it was just, like, one of those shows that was kind of, like... Common knowledge. Talked about often. That you just felt like you knew it. Yeah. Quick rundown on Life Goes On for anyone who doesn't know. This followed the uh, suburban struggles of the Thatcher family. They were just kind of like your everyday, average American family. Uh, We had Kelly Martin, who played Becca. She was like the, I guess, the breakout star of the show. Is she really the only one still acting? She does like Hallmark shit now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So she was like the angsty teen. She always dealt with like existential crises. She dated one of the Chads, Chad Lowe, I think we decided at one point. I want to say it's Chad Lowe in this one. It might be Chad Lowe. There there was a few Chads running around. And not going to lie, we have actually gotten them very confused before yeah who's the other chad chad allen chad allen uh chad allen is the one from um the alien show um out of this world no chad allen was on my two dads why did i think uh, uh, who's on uh, steve burton it's out of this world right yeah that was steve burton they kind of have a similar vibe to me i don't know why i i can see it in the 80s they had similar hair S- steve's probably a good five years older though yeah probably uh another breakout star in life goes on was corky thatcher the um the teen with Down syndrome. This was like a big deal. This was a huge, huge deal. He went to mainstream high school. He had a job at like a movie theater in an episode, I think. Um, he dealt with bullies. It was wild. It it was a wild time. Mm-hmm. I think music rights is an issue with this show because I think they used to play a lot of music. I remember the family dancing a lot. Oh, I'm sure it is because like just looking at the time period of when that show was on, it's it's got to be music rights. It's got to be music rights. Because uh, this this is a fairly popular show. I, I think it's one that if it went streaming, it would get a bit of attention. I'm not honestly sure if it would get the most positive attention from Gen Z, just because of how Gen Z reacts to older media. I always, like, in my memory, I haven't seen the show since probably 1992, but I always felt like they kind of um, painted Corky in a good light, though. Like, I don't think he was ever slighted in any way. Like, it, this was... Yeah, no. And you know what? I can't ever remember if the show is a comedy or a drama, to be honest with you. I'm guessing a drama, like a family drama. Yeah. I Seventh don't... Heaven-ish type show. Um, it might have been a dramedy. Yeah, I, it's it's drama. It's a drama. Uh, but I think it had some humorous elements to it maybe i don't know oh i'm sure my memory is giving me like picket fences kind of vibes where it's like it can go either way fences was more like eerie indiana though it was just a little off the wall i mean i was going with like um humor drama scale no i can see i mean it's not like as cheesy and um sanctimonious as um like a life or as a seventh heaven but it's also not, you know, an off-the-wall picket fences, 
Twin Peaks sort of thing. Uh, the other, the Alaska one. Um, Northern Exposure. Northern Exposure, yeah. <laughs> the one with the moose. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, ABC, 8 o'clock. Any guesses? You have to know this shit. Gosh, 1991, ABC. Sunday night. <laughs> Is it Magical Worlds of Disney? No, it's America's Funniest Home Video and America's Funniest oh. People. It's like that, that block. Oh, okay. So I was thinking they were in the 7 o'clock slot, and then when you didn't put them at 7, I was like, oh, I, maybe I'm too early for that. Uh, usually, yes, that is the case. But I, I don't know. Maybe they just kind of switched it up this year. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm really excited for uh, 9 o'clock, though. <laughs> this, this has got me giddy. Giddy with excitement. Okay, what is it? Because I can't even take a guess we're going to the movies and we're going to the <gasps> cinematic movies tonight Ooh. this is this is a big movie a big 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 oh movie. my gosh what Any is guesses? it guesses no i might have just said the title 11 times big oh <laughs> big with tom hanks oh my gosh yes tom hanks as a teenager he makes a wish to zoltar a sketchy like carnival machine that he wishes he was bigger and he wakes up and he's like a 30 year old man <laughs> and then he has to get a job fall in love dance on a um like life-size piano that he like bounces around on yeah i have always wanted to do that the giant piano at fao schwartz you want to go over to the tiffany network cbs to see what uh, they have to bless us with this evening yeah, what's got CBS got? Because, I don't know, ABC had big, man. Yeah, uh, this is a pretty standard night for CBS. I mean, we get 60 minutes at 7, tick, tick, tick. Murder, She Wrote at 8, we know. It just lived there. Mm-hmm. And then at uh, 9 o'clock, we get a TV movie. I'm not sold on this one. Okay. Uh, this is called One Against the Wind. One Against the Wind? Yeah. Uh, this is about a British countess who puts her life at risk as she organizes the daring escape of Allied soldiers out of World War II Nazi-occupied France. Okay. The only thing this has going for it is that it stars uh, Judy Davis. Do you know the name Judy Davis? I do not. Uh, she played Hedda Hopper on Feud. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that Judy Davis. And um, do you know the name Sam Neill? I recognize the name, yes. Uh, you probably wouldn't because he's from Jurassic Park. He played uh, Dr. Grant. And I know I know what you think about Jurassic Park. So Listen, I've never actually watched Jurassic Park or any of the Jurassic Park movies or the Jurassic World movies. So Blows my mind. Just <laughs> blows. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sold on this movie, though. Like it- Oh, he's in the peacock show apples never fall i started watching that any good it's interesting it's just a little heavy it's a little difficult to binge watch because it's not that engaging thriller that you need it to be to binge it and in a weekend you're like you know what i'll I'll get to it when i get to it kind of thing exactly all right you want to go over to fox see what our boys at uh foxy are up to tonight i'm gonna guess we've got at some point married with children and the tracy ullman show um we are past the age of tracy ullman show tracy ullman show is like that was like 87 to like 89 hey i this period is a blur okay this is actually a pretty good night of fox uh seven we have seven slots so seven o'clock is true colors okay we talked about this before okay is that one of the sitcoms where it's like the mixed race family yes i think it just was on for one season um it might have had some decent names and i can't remember anything off the top of my head I was going to say Telma Hopkins, but I feel like she's in, like, Family Matters time at this point. Yeah, I feel like this is definitely Family Matters time. All right, 7.30, a show we've done before, uh, Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Yes, Parker Lewis. We love Parker Lewis. It was a little, like, high school show. Parker Lewis never loses. He always gets involved in shenanigans. It's like a Ferris Bueller ripoff. Swatches. 8 o'clock. I was surprised this show was out at 8 o'clock, because this show is pretty scandalous to me. Uh, In Living Color. In Living Color on a Sunday night. Huh. I think it always was. I don't know. Well, I feel like that's a Thursday. I don't know why I feel like it's a Thursday night show, but... I think at one point it was paired up with The Simpsons, so maybe that's why you're thinking that, because mm-hmm. The Simpsons used to be on Thursday for all you uh, young listeners out there. Yeah. 8.30 is a show we've definitely done before, Rock. Yes, we did do Rock, yes. Charles S. Dutton, uh, he's an African-American guy, like a kind of like a middle-class guy. He's got a respectable job, got a respectable family, and he just kind of has to deal with like his in-laws, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the premise of Rock? It's been a while. Uh, it's like a working class guy just dealing with like the wife and life. 
And it was live. They were they were live. Not all the time, sometimes. Not all the time, but that's like the big thing about that I remember about rock is that it would be live. And they would sometimes do dramatic episodes. Yeah. Like special episodes. I loved it. It was a good show. Yeah. Good times. Uh, nine o'clock, you got that right. Married Children, The Bundys, Love and Marriage, uh, Candy Seagal, Ed O'Neill, David Faustino, Christine Applegate, Marcy. <laughs> I can't, can't think of her. Amanda Bears. Mm-hmm. Um, classic show, classic little series. Uh, we've done it before. We've definitely dabbled into yeah. it. Not enough. I feel like we need to do it some like another one at some point in time. We'll, we'll find something. They got some good apps. Uh, 9.30 is a show that we have been talking about doing for years. Uh, you've recently watched it and you kind of told me it didn't live up to the, like the memory hype. Uh, Herman's head. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Herman's head, Herman's head's like a, it's kind of like a workplace comedy, but it like jumps into this guy's head okay. and he has all these people who live in his head. Let, let me explain this. The best way to explain it is a adult male workplace comedy crossed with inside out. Okay. All right. That's a good good way to describe it. Because honestly, when I first saw Inside Out, I was like, oh, it's like Hermit's Head for a teenage girl. Yeah, but like Hermit's Head was kind of like dicey though, wasn't it? Yeah. So I saw it would not last today. I mean, to be fair, a lot of early Fox shows would not make it today. There was there was a lot of wild ones. Like, remember the show Babes on Fox? Yeah. It was these, like, heavy set girls. And, I don't know. It was just, like, fat jokes all the time. Yeah. Uh, Wendy Jo Sperber was on it, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was watching... I watched an episode of Herman's Head. I, it, it had to have been in, like, a compilation of something I found on YouTube. And... Herman ended up dressing as a woman, and he got hit on by, like, his boss, but, like, a famous basketball player realized he was actually a guy, and then he found out that Hetty, who's played by the woman who plays Carol on Friends, might be pregnant, and then there's talk about abortion, and I'm just, like, sitting here, like, this would never air in 2024 this way. What am I watching? This would be like, this would never be in the same episode in 2024. That's just one episode that you watched? That was just one episode. Didn't we get a request to do this show, like on YouTube? Didn't someone request this? We did, I think so. It's it's floating out there. Maybe we'll get to it one day. All right. Uh, you want to end things off with NBC, see what the Peacock was strutting tonight? Yeah, What what's the Peacock got for us? I'm actually, like, mostly sold on this night. <laughs> So, okay. se- seven o'clock, things kick off with Area Indiana. We'll get to you in a minute. We'll we'll go through the beats. Uh, seven thirty, which I thought this show was just oddly paired with. Maybe that is the reason why both of these shows failed. Uh, the Torkelsons. Area Indiana was paired with the Torkelsons. Yes, the opener. But the Torkelsons was Erie, Indiana. Wow. The, yeah, those do not go together. But you know what's hilarious? Is they both have a major following because they played on the Disney Channel. Yeah, the Torkelsons, uh, I think initially, like as the Torkelsons was just one season. And then it got like revamped the next year. It was called like Going Home or something. And you know who was on the next season? Uh, I forget. Remind me. Jason Mars did. And Brittany Murphy. <laughs> oh, was he? And they only kept, like, three of the actual Torkelson kids. And Perry King was on it, too. Yeah, because there was, like, ten Torkelson kids, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of Torkelson kids. And it's, like, the mom kept three. And the rest, like, went with the dad that we never saw. <sighs> Wasn't Minkus on the first season of Torkelson's? Yes! <laughs> yes! He was Chucky Lee. He was on all season, all the seasons of it. So he survived the cut. He made the cut. Yeah. But then he, like, moved Ugh. to Boy Meets World for a season, and then he disappeared from there and came back years later as Mouth. Do you know, I don't think I've ever seen, like, the, the going home season of Torkelson's. Like, I don't think it exists to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any memory of it. But this is, like, in that era where Jason Marsden was in, like, a lot of stuff. This is when he starts showing up in a lot of stuff. Just kind of popping around. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, the only thing that's kind of like the odd man out um, for NBC for me is the next hour, Hot Country Nights. This was like a country music like feature. Like they would just play live country music, I think. What? 
which we've we've talked about this before. This has definitely come up before because I am baffled by this because I don't think country music was like mainstream in 1991. I have no memory of it ever being this big that it made it itself a TV show on NBC. It aired from November 1991 to March 1992. Yeah, so that's like a that's probably just as long as Erie and Dan and the Torkelsons. Like this this probably aired all along. Featured country music and stand-up comedy created by Dick Clark. Really? Yeah. Uh, I mean maybe that was like the catch. Like he was like, "Hey, Dick Clark's going to kind of do his uh, country thing tonight." Yeah. It's stand-up comedy apparently. You know what? I can see like Jeff Fox- Foxworthy being on this and like the um Uh, let's see. The blue collar guys. The debut episode on November 24th, 1991 featured Katie Oslin, Alabama, Clint Black, Doug Stone and Pam Tillis. All right, so like this is like episode 2 tonight then. Yeah. Uh, that's wow. like all the information. It just says the show faltered in ratings against murder. She wrote America's Funniest Home Videos and in Living Color. <laughs> the twelfth and final episode aired on March first, nineteen ninety two. Its slot was replaced in April by the science fiction drama Man and Machine, which I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> never heard of it. You want to end the night? You want to end this wild night of television? Yeah. What happened after Hot Country Nights? Oh my god! I would. You know what? I would probably watch this now. Probably wasn't watching it then. I was probably like knee deep in the Bundys and Herman's Head. But today, I would watch this. Uh, it's a TV movie. We're dipping back into the TV movie world. Okay. Uh, it's a little movie called Fatal Friendship. Ooh. All right. Do you want the cast first or do you want the description? I feel like I should give you the cast so you can picture the people. Yeah. All right. Um, so the two big names in this are Gerald McCraney. Okay. And K- Kate Mulgrew. I know the name. I know the name. She played Captain Janeway on one of the Star Treks. And then she was big on uh, Orange is the New Black. She was kind of like the big... One of the big names on that show. Okay, like I've seen her like on like talk shows and stuff. So the premise of this movie is a family man becomes suspicious of his lifelong friend and neighbor, who he begins to suspect is a cold-blooded hitman. His life then becomes endangered when he learns of the man's underworld connections. Oh my god. I love the 90s. I love made-for-TV movies. <sighs> Oh my god. This was probably like high intense drama too. <laughs> like high intense. Oh my god, totally. Oh my god. I could see a scene, um, like I don't know if Gerald McCraney's the hitman, because like, he gets hitman vibes from me, so I could see him being the hitman, but I could just see like a scene where like the two buddies are like, they're at like a backyard cookout, and maybe like the guy like knows he has to leave to go do a job, and he's like trying to think of an excuse to get out of there. And he's just like, oh, man, I got to go back and, like, uh, you know, I have a slow roast pork going. I got to go check on. And he just, like, takes off and, like, cuts some lady's head off. And never shows up with that slow roast pork. And never shows up with that slow roast pork. And then, like, the other guy shows up. He's like, hey, uh, you know, I'm just kind of looking to see where that – like, he's, like, covered in blood. And he's like, oh, like, oh, I had a hard time with the slow roast pork. It got a little – it was a little too rare. Yeah. It wasn't slow cooking fast enough. Oh, my God. Um, so that's that night of television. Um. I don't know. I'm pretty impressed by it. It's not a bad night. No. like It's not a great night. Uh, you know what? I would give this four out of five slow roasted porks. Yeah. Like, I don't know how many slow roasted porks you're going to give this night. Uh, you know what? You get big. You get two made for TV movies. We've got a lot of variety on the on what's playing. Yeah, you, um, mom and dad could be watching 60 Minutes while the kids watch Eerie and Deer and the Torkelsons. Exactly. You can laugh together to America's Funny Some Videos, and then you can kind of like separate and everyone does their own thing at the 9 o'clock slot. Exactly. Yeah, good times. Oh. All right. Um, so that's that night. You want to do a cast breakdown before we just go through this like nine minute episode of uh, Area Indiana? Yeah, let's do a quick cast breakdown. Oh, uh, let me find my little. Let me find my notes. Thought I was prepared, but apparently I'm not. Mm-hmm. So we already kind of talked about Marshall Teller, uh, played by Omri Katz. He's 13 in this episode. Um, I think he's a 13 year old, right? Yeah, he's like 13 ish. Yeah. Um, he's kind of like the show's protagonist. He had just moved mm-hmm. to Erie, Indiana from New Jersey, of all places. Yes. 
uh, with his family. He immediately notices some weird things going on in town, like Elvis is alive and his neighbor. I mean, you know, it is the year 2024, and people still think that Elvis is alive. Have we had any sightings recently, though? There's a dude! People that I've seen TikToks about it. They think there's this, like, dude who is Elvis, and they're like, if you look at his teeth and pictures, they match Elvis's, like, specific dental work. And I'm like, dude, Elvis would be so old now. Like, older than this dude. <laughs> how old is this guy? <laughs> like, I don't even know. Like, how... Well, Elvis was, like, 20 in, like, what, the 50s? So he would have to be born in the 30s. So he's, like, pushing 100 right now. Elvis was born on January 8th, 1935. Okay, so he'd be 90 next, like, yeah. this January, this coming January. Which is, it's plausible. I mean, it could happen. I mean, there's a there's a lot of 90-year-olds, like, kicking around out there. Yeah. Doing the uh, Charleston. I think it's like way after their time. <laughs> the Charleston is from the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, I know. But you know what? I feel like um, they might have they might have still done it, just like the way people born in 2001 might do the Macarena. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. I don't think anyone does the Macarena anymore. Uh, I, I, I totally haven't tried to teach the Macarena or the chicken dance to my kiddos or anything. I don't even... Do the kids on that 90s show even do the Macarena? <laughs> no. Actually, wait. There might have been. Is there a Macarena episode? There has to be a Macarena there, episode. There has to be at the very least. I think at the very least there's something like, uh, one of the kids having like a daydream that includes the Macarena. It's gotta be. Because the Macarena was a thing then. For sure. Alright. Um, if you... Anyone listening out there knows of that 90s show did the Macarena, just tweet us at Fairy Podcast and, or just excess, I'm sorry, just excess at Fairy Podcast and <laughs> school us. All right. Um, so Marshall's kind of like, um, he's kind of like documenting. He keeps like a little like trapper keeper of like all the weird things happening in town. He like makes notes. He has like a trophy case. Yeah. He's got like a trapper keeper. He's got like a medicine case. That he, like, probably pulled out of, like, an eerie Indiana dump. Most episodes, like, end with him, like, putting something in there, right? But this one doesn't. The one we did tonight, he doesn't do anything. Yeah, because I think he's he keeps the key around his neck. Because it's the key to yeah. the cabinet. So, which uh, is a main, main um, plot point coming up in a little bit. Stay tuned. Uh, then you have Marshall's best friend, Simon. Is he younger? Yeah, he's definitely younger. He's like a year younger, I think. He's got red hair. He's kind of like the sidekick. He's always at the house. Mm -hmm. like he's always hanging out at uh, Marshall's house. Yeah, he's that friend who is always there. Yeah, he's like the only other person who's like in on like something's up in the town. They're like, something's not right in this town. They kind of like work on it together. Um, then we have the dad. He's he's like an inventor, if I remember correctly. He like invents things. He's like a wacky inventor. But like he got the job that moved them to Erie, and he's just like it's a nice little town, nothing weird. Bigfoot is not going through our trash can. Elvis is not down the street. Yeah, it's a little slice of Americana. <laughs> I don't get much from him. Not gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> no, the they're dad. Not. not much to him. Not much to him. And um, you know what? I love the actress who plays the mom, but. The mom's kind of a dud in this show, though. Yeah, I mean, it is Dawson Leary's mom. Yeah, Mary Margaret Humes. Uh, she plays yes. Marshall's mom. I don't even know her name. Marilyn, I just looked it up. Um, she's just kind of there. She just makes breakfast, and that's about it. She's just like the mom who is busy with the teenage daughter, so she doesn't notice that the son's running around town, like, following conspiracy theories. You know what? This show would do very well today, because people love yeah. themselves a good conspiracy theory. So I feel like this show would track today. You bring up the sister, who is, like, never in the show. Mm -hmm. Like, she's always in, like, one scene every episode. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know her name, or who played her. Like, you know what? Like, I was watching this episode, and they show the sister, and I was like, oh, there's a sister. She's played by Julie Condra. Do we know her? Her character's name is Cindy. But she's she's still getting roles every so often. What's what's the biggest thing she's done besides this? I'm looking. Give me a hot name. An episode of Diagnosis Murder. Uh I, I don't know if I'd call that a big big catch. A, an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. The, those are her. All right. Everything else, I'm like, I don't know what these are. She did an episode of Married with Children. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. 
She probably played like uh, one of Kelly's friends. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And then, uh, then sometimes you have Jason Marston. Um, he kind of comes in later on though as Dash X. He's yeah. I think they were kind of in that like the hey, we need to reboot the show a little bit. We need to bring in like yeah, we need to like ooh, bring in someone new. Do something. So he comes in as Dash X. He's like a, um, he's got like what gray hair and he has no memory of who he is and he's kind of like. He's he's more of like an antagonist to Marshall. Like they're not friends. Yeah. But sometimes they team up. Yeah, in the very few episodes he's in, that's what happens. If I remember correctly, the his first episode, he like pretends to be a ghost. Yeah, there like the whole thing, he's like just a there's something sketch about him like the whole time. Yeah, he's he's like scrappy do. <laughs> oh my god, that is the Perfect, scrappy do perfect example of who he is he's scrappy he's the scrappy do he's the scrappy do uh and then you have sometimes um john Aston shows up as like a store owner mm-hmm. but he's not really the store owner. he's not really the store owner or he is i can't remember there's, there's like two there's two of them right there's like the character he plays yeah. there's two people who play him and then uh, i don't know yeah but he's kind of like a, um he kind of knows what's going on, doesn't he? Kind of give advice to um, Marshall sometimes. He kind of guides Marshall and Simon on where to investigate something. Yeah, he's kind of like the uh, the old wise man that they probably shouldn't be hanging out with. He's like the John Locke of this show. Yeah, <laughs> is what he is. Like I could like Walt is always like hanging out with John Locke, and uh, Michael is like, no, mm-hmm. don't hang out with that creepy old man. But they do. He does anyways. So that's him. Mm-hmm. Um, am I missing anyone else? Like, because I feel like everyone else is just kind of like pops up here. I feel like for the main cast, that's like it. In this episode, we do have um Nikki Cox. Oh yeah, Nikki Cox uh, from Unhappily Ever After plays Julie. Was her name Julie? Was that her name? Yes, Nikki Cox, who is also known for Las Vegas. Unhappily Ever After. And she was on General Hospital. Recently? No, it's been a while since her character was on General Hospital. Okay. Like, actually, probably like 94, 95, I think, is when she was on General Hospital. Because she played Antonio Sabato Jr.'s uh, sister. Okay. Yeah, as soon as Nikki Cox popped up, I was like, oh my god, I think that's Nikki Cox. And I had to, like, pause when I was watching. Mm Mm-hmm. Go on to like Wikipedia or whatever, and I was like, "It is Nikki Cox." Like it, it, just, it yeah. was just weird seeing Nikki Cox as like a child because yeah, I was like, "Wow, she's so young." <laughs> like, she, I think she's older than uh, Marshall, but she still looks pretty young in this. I mean, yeah. All right, so the episode we did is called "The Lost Hour." Basically, this episode involves daylight savings time, and we learn pretty much right away in the episode that. Marshall's excited about, like, gaining an hour of time because he gets to play video games with Simon for, like, an extra hour. Marshall's dad comes in and is like, all right, time to go to bed. He's like, yeah. but it's daylight savings is ending today. Like, I get an extra hour. And he's like, oh, no, we don't because here in um, Indiana, we don't observe it. Marshall is livid. He is, like, pissed. But you know what? Indiana does now follow daylight savings time. I'm going to tell you, I am team, like, everyone – else in this town because i hate daylight savings time i think it's the stupidest thing (laughs) i don't understand it we are currently in daylight savings time i like the time we're in right now i do not want to fall back yeah i like the time where like this is my time like when things kind of stay a little bright yeah like this is my time i don't want to fall back i don't one of the, yeah, I like being sprung forward i guess is the best way to say it like it's kind of cool to gain that hour but it, it it really fucks with you like it really really fucks with you it really does oh my gosh it messes with the animals like when the time changes the the animal you're like you're if you have like a set time that you feed your pets and you're waiting for the clock to turn and they're just like uh their internal clock is like no it's now yeah they're looking at you like it's now uh it really fucks up like how you feel in the morning when you get up for work because, you know, like you're either like a little more tired. It does. And then it feels like you should be going home, but you're like, you still have another hour to go. And it just really, really messes with you. And like, I'm going to tell you, kids do not adapt. Uh, I mean, I don't adapt. <laughs> it takes me like, no, like weeks. It takes me weeks to get back on track. 
The first few days after a time change, if you work with, like, little kids, oh my god. Do they become more, like, sluggish? Or just, like, hyper? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this question. Yeah, it depends on the kid. It actually depends on the kid. Like, some might become more aggressive. Some might become just, like, they're exhausted and they're like, I don't understand what's happening. And, like, the kids I work with, they can't always communicate what is upsetting them. So, so you're just going to kind of get, um... Angry kids? Yeah, pretty much. Ang- angry they had to get up an hour earlier. You know, yeah. they didn't want to get up an hour early, but they had to. But just, you know what? I will vote for whoever keeps the time the same forever. Like, don't fuck with time. <laughs> don't fuck with time. And if you work overnights on these nights, like, the night that you go back in time is the worst night ever. It's Yeah. It's absolutely the worst night ever because that extra hour feels like an extra nine hours. So Marshall is like, fuck this. He's like, I am moving my clock back. Like he pulls out his like Casio digital watch, like taps the little buttons on the side. You hear like the beep, 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 yes. beep, beep. You know, <laughs> it took me back. Oh my gosh. You know I what? I knew that beep. I- <laughs> With my smartwatch now, I don't even have to set it. It just like syncs up to my, my phone. Yeah. I think the only clock in the world that like I have to change now is the microwave and the car. Yeah, car, microwave, and the alarm clock in my bedroom. And you know what? I never even... I have not changed my clock in my car on the last one, so it's just going to, like, adjust itself back now (laughs) to the actual time. And that's really going to throw me off. Yeah. Because I'm going to be like, oh, no, it's 7, when it's really, like, (laughs) 8. Because, you know, I just don't feel like changing Mm -hmm. my car clock. Why, Why would you? I don't know. You know what? Changing a car clock is really hard. It's not easy. Honestly, I believe I've made my boyfriend do it the last couple time changes. I'm like, do it, do this. I don't. It's not just. I don't know. It's not hitting that one button on the side of the watch, or like hitting the time button on the microwave. Yeah. You have to hit like a weird combination of menu and up and down, and like the enter button. Oh, it's, it's yeah, way hard. Yeah, I'm just like Kevin. Please do it. <laughs> While this is going on, um, I just want to bring up. I talked about this to you earlier. The so they're about to go to bed. The dad comes in in his like night robe, <laughs> and he's wearing like his clothes completely, like a shirt and like jeans underneath his night robe, like late at night. <laughs> I just, oh my god, what time of the day did you send me this text to? Like, I have to look at this. It was early today, right? Yeah, like, because remember, I'm two hours behind you still. It was probably like 9 a.m. my time. Because I sent you my response at 7.54 a.m. Mountain time. And I was like, would you rather did the dad not have clothes on? I mean, I would have preferred that. I don't know. <laughs> like, it would have been a little more realistic. I mean, I can understand if they were like pajama bottoms and like a t-shirt no this guy was but jeans this guy like a part of me was thinking that he probably was like wearing like slacks and a sh- like uh, i don't know like a shirt like a t-shirt or whatever he was wearing he was like doing the scene and then like i don't know the director was like oh this ain't realistic uh you know we need to portray that like it's time for them to go to bed and then he just like throws a bathroom bomb real quick like, they probably had other scenes to film. They were probably on, like, a time constraint, maybe. Yeah. So they didn't have time to, like, under... And it's, like, open. Like, the, mm-hmm. the robe is, like, open. It's not, like, tied. So I just didn't understand the purpose of him wearing the bathrobe. Yeah. I- I'm not a bathrobe person, but if I do, it's, like, I get out of the shower until I find clothes. That's the purpose of a bathrobe to me. A bathrobe either, but, like, either I... If I'm taking a shower and then I'm not getting dressed right away, it's towel time. Which is where I just, like... Yeah, it's towel time. Lay on the bed and just scroll through my phone and I, like, space out for a while. Yeah, but I, I don't know. They just feel like doing the the, <laughs> the bathroom. I don't know. It just, it just blew my mind. I feel like... I'm not gonna lie. I feel like bathrobes are definitely more of a thing you see on TV than the average person actually wears. I've probably seen, like, five bathrobes in my life, to be honest with you. Like, like I can probably this this hand right here. I have all five fingers. That's how many times I've seen a bathrobe. Like I think I like I had a bathrobe when I was in college, and I had the communal shower thing, the community shower. Like I I own one. Like I physically own one, and I've probably put it on like twice. I have like a silk one. I actually haven't even worn that. For some reason, I just always really wanted one with a hood. 
so I went and bought one with a hood and I just like, I thought I was gonna be a bathroom person. And then I just like, you know what? I don't like this. Like, yeah, the, like, I don't understand the purpose of this. Like, why don't I just wear a towel till I find clothes? Like, why do you have to? I mean, I guess if you gotta like go outside and like get the newspaper, which you don't do anymore, it makes sense. Yeah, maybe. I, even then, I'm still like, no. Like, I'll just throw some sweatpants on and a sweatshirt and go outside and get my newspaper that I don't get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, the dad, like, makes Simon and uh, Marshall go to bed. Marshall's pissed. He, like, is like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm moving my clock back. Which we already talked about. I'm still going to live on daylight savings time. Nobody else around me is, but I will. Yeah. So he goes to bed. <laughs> this is the. Well, wait, wait. You've got to remember they also, like, they're drinking from the milk carton in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they're just passing it around. And the mom comes in and she's like, oh, isn't it so sad? Like, when she sees the missing person on the milk carton and it's. On the side. It's Nikki Cox's character, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, she's on all the milk cartons. They're so just, like, whatever to it. Yeah, like, I guess she's some chick that lives in town that's been missing for a year. And they just, like, throw in all the milk cartons. Because yeah. you got to remember that was a thing that people did. Mm-hmm. Not people, but, like, they did that back in the yeah. day. Like I, like, I have seen that before. Like, that was, like, in our lifetime. Like, it was. And it's just, like... Because milk was sourced locally. So weird at the same time that they don't do it anymore. Well, I think milk was mostly sourced locally. So, you know, you had, like, yeah. your, like, cow farm down the road. And you had this guy that just, like, went out every morning and just, like, milk cows, pasteurized his own milk and, like, threw it in, like, the jugs that he had printed. And then just, like... Put him around town. He just, like, dropped, like, a milk crate off. Apparently, it became obsolete due to the Amber Alert system. Really? Like, that That recent? That's that's literally a line from the Wikipedia. Uh, I also remember the card. Like, remember, like, the postcards that you got in the mail about missing kids? <laughs> yes! You'd get those postcards and it'd have, like, the age picture the pro- age progression picture and then um yeah we also had soul asylum music videos to help us find missing kids <laughs> yes hey people got found from that soul asylum video anyway um yeah back in the day if a kid went missing uh, you they dug up a recent picture of him and it wasn't even like a good picture because you couldn't really like print images that good on the milk carton so it was like it always like kind of looked like a sketch, but not really. Yeah, it was like a single color print. If you... It was just this black and white like Xerox picture. Yeah, so like it's like oh maybe that looks like Julie, but I I can't tell because you know the ink smudged on print. Yeah. Plus, we get like condensation. No, I'm like literally like I googled missing kids on milk cartons, and the pictures are all terrible. Yeah, they they were never good. Oh my gosh, there's even like hand drawn like. Age progressions, no. Oh, uh, that was always great. Yeah, but, like, you would see, like, I don't know, like, say, like, three towns over, like, a girl went missing. She would show up in your milk carton because you got your milk carton from, like, Same. the farm nearby. <laughs> yeah. it, ain't, it ain't, like, um, I don't know. I don't even know the name of the milk. Hood? Hood makes milk? Oh, honey, honey, no. The, the dairies are still more localized. Are they? Yeah. You're not getting, like, the brand of milk you get is not going to be the same brand of milk. That I'm going to find at my stores. You don't have Gorelic Farms? No. Interested. We have like Meadow Gold or something. I don't know. I feel like I get the same milk companies in South Carolina that I got in Massachusetts, though. I, I don't know what to tell you. You know what? I'm going to do a... But I don't buy milk, so I can't really answer that question. Oh, see, that would be why. You know what? The next time I'm in the grocery store, I'm going to do a little milk thing, and I'll just like send you a picture of milk. I'm just going to get like these random pictures of milk. And I'm going to be like, that's not what we have here. I just think milk is really disgusting. It's vile. It's disgusting. Oh my god, dude. I love milk. I oh. drink milk every single day. I love it. I just want to vomit here. That. I love it. But that just makes No, no, no. And I don't drink like skim milk or low fat milk. I drink the whole milk. The straight up whole like thick ass fucking milk that stinks. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so good. It's so good. Do you get it in the jug? Do you get it in the jug? Yeah, I get a gallon jug. Oh, that even tastes even worse. At least, like, in the carton, I can, like, no. deal with it with cereal, but the jug, oh, fuck that no. jug. Like, I, that's how, that's how much milk I drink, though. Oh, uh, so you're getting, like, you're getting heavy, heavy-duty milk. Like, I drink, I put, so in the morning for my coffee, I have the coffee, I mix it with a carnation instant breakfast packet, 
a scoop of collagen to keep myself looking use- youthful. Get some uh, get some retinol cream. I already have retinol cream. And um, then I and my creamer, and then I top it off with milk. Because like I have a big cup that I take with me to work. And then at night, does a body good? It does. <laughs> And then at night, I have a cup of milk before I go to bed. I don't know. I just can't do milk. <laughs> I love milk. I love milk so much. Everybody thinks I'm so weird, but I love it. Well, anyway, Simon and Marshall love milk because they're passing this thing around like it's a fucking bottle of vodka. <laughs> they're just like. I mean, it's true. That's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> they're like playing. They're playing like Nintendo, just passing around this milk carton, and they're pissed because they have to go to sleep because Dad says so. Mom, come. Mom tries to be like the. Like, the good cop in the scenario, she's like, yeah, just think, like, you get to sleep another hour. Actually, you don't. You don't get to sleep another hour. I'm sorry. No, because <laughs> yeah. there is no daylight savings time here. I got, you know what? I think she's like, oh, I'll give you guys, make you guys some breakfast in the morning. Like, that's it. Uh, but anyway, yeah. we cut to, like, the next morning. Marshall wakes up. This is my favorite part of the episode. Like, his first instinct is just to get out of bed, pick up his pillow, and just beat the fuck out of Simon, like, in that, like, lower bunk thing that he's sleeping in. Yeah. Like, he doesn't even... He just gets up and starts smacking the shit out of where, where he should be sleeping. And there's, like, no movement. So he, like, pulls the covers up and, like, Simon's not there. <laughs> so Sign of Simon. It's full-on, like, Home Alone type. Nobody's home. But I just love that he just immediately gets up and decides to beat the fuck out of his friend. Like, that's his first thing to do. I hate to tell you this. You might have forgotten this, but that's what boys that age are like. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long, long time. I don't think I've ever done that, though. When I was, like, living with my nephew and his friend would, like, sleep over all the time. Like, that kid was over about as much as Simon is over at the Teller household. So that's, like, the kind of shenanigans they would do? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. But I just thought that was funny. No, my favorite would be I'd, like, walk out to go to the bathroom and they're like, oh, Aunt Kat, you're home, as they're, like, beating each other with pillows. <laughs> Uh, so Marshall's, like, now just, yeah, walking around the house, like, Kevin McAllister style, like, no one's home. Like, I can, I can leave the toilet seat up. I can pee with a door open. Like, those kind of things. And he thinks it's kind of like, I don't know, like, like a plus. Like, this is exciting. But then he goes outside. Nobody's here. But then it's like, oh, wait. The quick realization of, where is everybody? So the part that I was really confused about, so he goes outside. So it's early in the morning, and there's, like, things in the street, like, jump ropes, like, in the middle of, like, the street and stuff. So daylight savings happens at, like, what, like, 2 a.m. or something? Yeah. <laughs> Why the fuck are there, like, little kids outside jump roping at 2 in the morning that made them disappear? It's Erie, Indiana, though. Yeah, I, I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's Erie, Indiana. They have kids that were sleeping in Tupperware. That is true. Uh, so he's outside, and, like, he sees, like, garbage men, but they're wearing, like, suits... And, like, black sunglasses. They kind of look like the bad guy from The Matrix. And they're, like, picking up things. And they they see Marshall. And as soon as they see Marshall, they start chasing him. Yeah, because they're like, ooh, ooh, a new one. A new one to chase after. Um, I have a question for you. Yeah. Have you ever read or seen Stephen King's The Langoliers? Nope. It's kind of like a similar premise where, um, so it's, like, about this plane that goes back in time like an hour or two or something like that so when they land like they're like an hour or two behind the rest of the world and like no one's around and these monsters come to like just devour the world because it shouldn't be there anymore so i don't know i got some similar vibes from that Mm -hmm. i don't i don't know what came first i don't know the langoliers of this episode of uh Eerie Indiana came first. I don't know. Like, I think we've talked about before, but, like, Stephen King kind of bores me. Uh, so the Langoliers, um, the TV movie, this was apparently a TV movie, came out in, um, 1995. (laughs) And the book, too. And the book, too. (laughs) What the fuck? So maybe Stephen King saw this episode. Oh, it was a miniseries. Oh, wait, no, hold on. That was just, that was just the movie. Four Past Midnight is the name of the Stephen King book it came in. When did that come out? I'm really curious. I just, like, that's what I was thinking of when I watched this. 1989 and 80, 80, 88 and 89 is when they were written. It was published in August 1990. Okay, so the, so the Langoliers came first. Okay, so maybe mm-hmm. the writer of Erie, Indiana read the Langoliers and was like, this should be an episode of our show. I like this theme. Yeah. So... Marshall is, like, running from these 
garbage men, well-dressed garbage men. And <laughs> he bumps into like an old guy driving around in a milk truck, like an old milkman. Yeah, old milkman. And the old milkman kind of is, I guess, his like guide in this episode. He kind of like guides him. Yeah, I would say he's like the guide to what's going on. He's kind of just like, oh, another one's here kind of thing. Like, it's been a while since I've seen another one. Mm -hmm. You must have turned your clock back an hour or whatever mm -hmm. he says. And yeah. Marshall's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so then we get like some good special effects right here. He He's kind of like given what Marshall advice on like how to get home, but he wants him to like come to the conclusion. So, by but before he does that, he, he, want, he goes, just yeah. look at the window. The back window of my milk truck. Have you ever done that before? And he's like, no, like, why would I? What would pull me to do that, you know? <laughs> so he, like, climbs up on the milk truck and he, like, looks in the back window. And it cuts to, like, the inside of Marshall's family's kitchen, like, in an hour from now. And Simon mm -hmm. is, like, sitting at the kitchen table, like, with the family. And... Marshall just starts talking to him, like, through the fucking milk carton. Yes. And, like, Simon's, like, the only one, of course, who even, like... Sees it. everybody else is like, where's Marshall? Is he still sleeping? Like, what is that kid doing? Well, you know what? I, we kind of fail to mention, but I think, like, Marshall was talking about running away. And yeah. Simon, I think, was like, oh, he must have ran away. He, he was, um... He thought about running away because that's what the girl on the milk carton did. Instead of Simon just being like, maybe he ran away and they can go fucking look for him. Simon just comes up with an excuse that like he decided to go for an early morning jog. It's like the family's like, oh, OK, we won't go look for him then. We'll let him run. OK, that totally sounds like Marshall. <laughs> um, did it also? I also found it really weird that um, I think it's established in the opening credits that Marshall is like a paper boy, mm -hmm. but you never actually see him like delivering papers no. like, in the show. Like he, he doesn't get up early in the morning to deliver papers. He's always like eating breakfast with the family. Yeah. He might be like an evening paper boy. Did they still have an evening paper? Uh, I mean, maybe in 1991 area Indiana they did, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Fuck if I know. I don't know. I think the guide, the milkman guide in this. So I think he wants Marshall to take. He tells him about the girl, Nikki Cox. And he's like, Nikki Cox is in town. Like, they're going to get her. Like, she's been evading these guys for like a year, but like, she needs to go. Otherwise, like, she's going to die if they eventually get her. I've tried, but like, she finds me really creepy, I think he says. Mm -hmm. Which tracks. Obviously. Marshall's like, all right, I'll go take care of it. So like, she lives in, like, the store they always go to. Well, first, Marshall, like, steals a car. Oh, that's right. And he decides he's going to just, like, get out of Erie, Indiana, and he's just going to drive to New Jersey, but he's got to get supplies oh, that from was the it. World of Stuff store first, because it's, like, just, like, the general store. Yeah, so he's going to get some, like, snacks and stuff to take. Yeah, he's like, I'm just going to go get some supplies from World of Stuff, and then that's when he runs into Nikki Cox, and they, like, team up together. To try to figure out and hide from the garbage men. Yeah, and I think, like, Nikki Cox doesn't want to go back, though, right? No, because she thinks her family doesn't miss her. And it's, she's like, nobody misses me, and Marshall's like, girl, you're on the milk cartons. <laughs> yeah, she even looks through the, um, she even looks through, like, the milk wagon <laughs> window, and she sees, like, her family, like, a year later to the day, like, sad. <laughs> like, and they're all like, we miss her. And she's like, oh, they do miss me. She's like, but how do I get back? And he's like, reset your watch. Oh, yeah, because she happened to have her watch with her, right? Yeah, she was we actually wearing her watch. Yeah, so she sets her watch back, like, ahead an hour, and she goes home. But, but Marshall. Marshall, our sweet, sweet, silly Marshall. He forgot to put his watch on when he went to bed, so he wasn't wearing it. Mm -hmm. He had to go back to the... <laughs> Go back to the milk wagon. Talk to Simon. And he had to try... So I just like the idea that Simon's just walking around this milk carton all day. There's no picture of anybody anymore. Until Marshall shows up at the window and then he's just like, Simon, reset my watch. And Simon's like, okay, this tracks. This makes sense. This makes perfect sense to me. And um, so... But there's like a time window. So like, like less... Simon can change the watch back by like a certain time. Then Marshall has to wait like a whole other year yeah. before he can do it again. 
So he's telling Simon to do it, but like Simon, I guess, sucks at digital watches. He doesn't know how to like u- like use it. Yeah, he's like, I hate digital watches. He's having like this total, total like breakdown, boober breakdown over technology. Uh, is the best way I could describe it. Like back in my day, watches were. So- you could hear him like you could hear the little beep and like the beep beep beep. beep. <laughs> yeah it's great and he's just having like total trouble with it like so much trouble he finally gets it and um like i guess like the, a doorway open i don't know like the window opens for him to go back and um yeah marshall's like talking to the old guy he's like will i ever see you again and the old guy's like you'll be surprised a hundred years from now you're gonna be in this very spot and marshall's like what the fuck are you talking about and the old guy like out of his like Blouse, he pulls like a little keychain. <laughs> pulls out the same key that Marshall wears around his neck, and Marshall's just like, oh crap. So I'm gonna be you a hundred years from now? And he's he he doesn't confirm or deny, but he insinuates that yes. Yeah. He is. And then he like just gets back, he hops back in the car, and the old guy drives away, and Marshall just like appears in his kitchen. Yeah. Or not see her. No, he wakes up in his bed. He wakes up in his bed. Oh yeah, That's he it. wakes up in his bed and like everything's as normal as normal can be in Erie, Indiana. Yeah, because I think, like, now, like, the parents are like, you know what, it's been, like, eight hours and <laughs> Marshall hasn't come back from his jog. <laughs> Maybe we should call the police. And then Marshall, like, comes downstairs and is like, wow, that was a great nap. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then we get, like, a uh, the episode ends with a quick cut over to Nikki Cox, like, his family. They're, like, they're sitting around all depressed. They look like they're about to fucking burn the house down. And then, like, she walks in the door, and she's like, Mom, Dad, Brother. <laughs> and they, they all, like, hug. Yeah. And then, like, I think, like, the final actual shot of the episode is, like, the milk wagon driving down the street of Erie, Indiana. Well, Marshall and Simon have to fill out their case notebook, and they're doing that with the voiceover as they, like, close up their... Did they actually do that in episode? Was it? Yeah, because they put the milk carton in, I think. I must have missed that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Oh, because there was no picture on it anymore, right? Yeah, there's no picture. So it's evidence Uh, that something strange is going on in the neighborhood. You know what? I want like a 30 years later, like them as adults, where are they now kind of thing. Oh my God. I could totally see Marshall like went to college. He got out of Erie. He has not come back. But now he has to come back. Like his father dies or something. Yeah. And like Simon's been there this whole time. And like Max got away from it. He's not as like into the conspiracy. But Simon's gone down the rabbit hole. (laughs) I like that you call them Max, by the way. (laughs) Whatever. Marshall, Max, they're they're the same person. Do you think that like, um, like adult Marshall, like in this scenario, would have, like, forgotten about the town. So, like, he comes back and he has to, like, rediscover it. I I would think that he has let it be romanticized in his mind. Like, it's a nostalgic, like, oh, yeah, we, like, had a few of these weird things happen. But it wasn't as, like, ridiculous as he... Um, he thinks he imagined it, really, you know? Like, do you think, like, as he got, like, a little bit older, like, he just became used to it? Yeah. I th- and then just kind of moved on? Or he got, like, interests? Like, maybe he joined, like, a team? Yeah, I think I think he kind of moved on. But, like, because Simon stayed behind, Simon didn't and got deeper and deeper into, like, whatever. Oh, and Simon's, like, a hot mess now. Like, Simon, like, lives, like, yeah. with, like a tinfoil hat. Yeah, and Simon's like, no, Marshall, don't you remember? And Marshall's like, what are you talking about? He's like, Bigfoot, Bigfoot went through your trash and Elvis lived on your street. And Marshall's like, bro, no. The dogs try to take over the world. And, like, the Tupperware twins. <laughs> and, and these guys slept in Tupperware. And Marshall's like, dude, no. And then, like, Simon's like, but you wrote it all down. Oh, and it's like a slow rediscovery. Of, yeah. I, I would buy that. I would buy that for a dollar. Yeah. I'd, I'd watch that. Or the other idea is Marshall took everything that happened and made it even more fantastical and wrote a children's book series basically the show basically the show but like he comes back to town and Simon's like bro none of this happened like what what is this and then it starts happening yeah <laughs> or not like it's like you said it was just all like he's like in a, a, a sane asylum yeah pretty much 
I would go for any of those scenarios. Um, Omri Katz, if you ever... Yeah, I think I think both could be, like, interesting. Yeah. I, I do like the idea of him coming back, though, and Simon's, like, a fucking crazy lunatic. He's, like, living in, like, a log cabin <laughs> in the woods of Erie, Indiana. Simon's just trying to, like, explain this town is not right, and everybody's like, Simon. You know what? Simon got in trouble with the law, like, real bad. Like, he done fucked up. Yeah. And... Marshall, like, practices law now, and he decides to come back pro bono. To help Simon out. To help Simon out, and then he gets, like, roped back up into this world. And, <laughs> I uh, could see it. I could see it. I'd buy that. I'd watch that show. On uh, Netflix, if you're looking to do something. It'd be a nice little, like, miniseries on Peacock or something. It would. Like, a good, like, four hour. Yeah. Maybe six hour. Like, six eps. Like, six 45-minute eps. Yeah, I think you'd probably do six, you know. Have, like... Give Marshall a kid. Give Simon a kid. I don't know if Simon would spawn in this scenario, though. He seems a little, like, loose cannon. <laughs> True. <laughs> I could I could see uh, Marshall, though. Like, and, and you know what? And his kids, like, involved into it. It's kind of like the new Ghostbusters with, like, mm-hmm. the little kids. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed the first new one. That's just basically the Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters, right? This is Harry Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to do it. We already got Ghostbusters. Answer the call, I think. What's it called? That's true. What's it? Don't answer the call, answer the call. I don't remember. Uh, the world? I don't, I don't know. It wasn't that good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen the second new one. Uh, me neither. I didn't even know the game. And you know what? Neither of them gave me Ecto Cooler, so whatever. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Trust me. Right. The the one with Melissa McCarthy gave us Ecto Cooler. High C after the great Melissa McCarthy debacle of Ghostbusters was like, we learned a lesson. We're not doing this. We're not doing this again. And then like, yeah. the other one actually probably did okay. And they're like, oh, you know what? We should have done it. I, I feel like the that first new one, that's actually like a continuation of the actual Ghostbusters. I think it did really well. Well, they made another one. Yeah. I mean, I saw um, the first one in theaters twice. I think I, I can't remember, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I've seen it. I know I've seen it. Um, mm-hmm. I forgot what I was going to say, but um, oh, uh, High C, Ecto Cooler. It, isn't it just something else now? Um, No, they don't have that flavor like at all anymore. I thought they just like changed the name of the flavor. It moved to a tangerine one. Like they called it tangerine and then okay. they don't make that anymore. Bullshit. Like Bullshit, but yeah. whatever, whatever. Um, did, didn't you, like, find a recipe to, like, how to make your own one day? There's, like, a bunch of different recipes, and none of them are quite right. Okay, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same garbage they throw into a fucking <laughs> carton. Listen, it doesn't have Slimer, and it's not green, and it doesn't go with an Elio's pizza on a Saturday afternoon. When you're watching um, <laughs> Eerie Indiana reruns on Fox Kids. <laughs> All right. Any last minute thoughts on Area Indiana? Anything we failed to mention in these plethora of discussion? It it fits for the time. It does. This is definitely um, it, an early '90s thing because it's, like, it's around the same time we got Are You Afraid of the Dark? Goosebumps is just after this. Um, mm-hmm. We even had like weird adult things like uh, Twin yeah. Peaks. This is kind of Twin Peaksy. Twin Peaks, Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. Um, this is all that era. That new Twilight Zone show that came out, the new mm-hmm. Utter Limit show. So this is like that whole era. I don't know. This is like kind of a hard thing to do now, right? Like, I feel like they try it every couple of years. Like, isn't they try to do something a couple of years ago called like Ghosted? Yeah, I think so. On Fox. It was kind of like a similar vibe. Yeah. They even tried to like turn Nancy Drew, like CW series, into like this type of show. Oh my God. Who ended up playing her dad? Uh, was it Scott Wolf? Yeah, it was Scott Wolf. Yeah, that's just no. Shout out to Scott Wolf. All right. Um, that's all I got on Erie, Indiana. Um, it was a book series afterwards that had like eight or nine books that came out kind of in the vein of Goosebumps. Um, I don't know. I definitely prefer this to Goosebumps, to be honest with you. Honestly, Goosebumps just didn't... Like, we watched that one episode and it just didn't do it for me. I think we were a little too old for Goosebumps. I think we were like on the cusp with, like, because I remember my brother was into Goosebumps. I had already, like, dipped into, like, 902 on Melrose Place by this point. So, so, like, I wasn't turning back. Exactly. We were looking for something more adult, like Sweet Valley High. Yeah, I wasn't dealing with, like, kids being afraid of, like, cameras that showed, like, skeletons. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I... Because I, I know I was watching um, Are You Afraid of the Dark, but Are You Afraid of the Dark had this... Uh... 
darker sense to it. Yeah. Goosebumps aired on like a Saturday morning. Are You Afraid of Dark aired at Saturday night when the lights were off. Plus it was like a Canadian show. It was like originally like a Canadian show. So like (laughs) them Canadians are fucked up and they have some fucked up (laughs) ideas involving Nev Campbell and like like deadly soup. I knew you were going to go back to the soup episode. And that fucking clown in the funhouse. I just think about the vampires in the freezer. Oh, yeah, that one. Shout out to the Midnight Society. Yeah, but I, um, you know, I still think I prefer yeah. Eerie Indiana to uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark, to be honest with you. I, I see, I'm an Are You Afraid of the Dark girl. Uh, I kind of like the, um, the sameness, though, kind of between everything. I, I can see that. We get the same characters. Yeah, I kind of just, I don't know. Even though there's, like, no real, like, ongoing plot of Eerie Indiana... Other than him, like, wanted to leave the town in his casebook. He wants to, like, run back to New Jersey. I feel that, though. I feel that. <sighs> That's what drew you in. All right. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing next week, because this could be, by next week, it could be, like, six months from now. You never know. But yeah, it could be Christmas episode. It could be, like, a summer episode. One never knows. It, it could but. just randomly be something in the archive that we recorded and Patrick just stumbled upon. Yeah, it could be um, the movie Together on, that was on MTV. One never knows. One never knows. <laughs> you, one never knows. So, uh, where can you follow our Wild Ass Adventures? Cut also the author. Where can you follow us? Um, you can follow us on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. It's Twitter, guys. It's always going to be Twitter. Yeah. Um, at Very Podcast. You can follow us on all the other socials at A Very Special Podcast. Do not accept imitations because they're still out there. And don't worry, guys, I still have my dossier. Oh, you're like Marshall over there. <laughs> I'm a petty bitch, and remember, revenge is a dish best served cold. Yes, old Klingon proverb. <laughs> all right, um. As always, girl, as always. Bye.